let's take another look at the if and else statement. So first, we'll import the random module so we can take advantage of the random numbers. And we're going to make a bomb, a random number, equal to a random dot rand int from 1 to 3. So we'll get a random number, 1, 2 or 3, and we're going to assign it to a variable we have called bomb. Now we're going to allow the user to import a number such that pick is equal to an integer of an input, and we'll say, please enter a number between 1, 2, 3. And now we can use an if statement to check if we have picked a number to avoid this bomb. So we want the user to be able to input a number and have to try and avoid the number, which is the bomb. So we can say, if pick is equal to bomb, we can print, sorry, you have exploded. And now here we can use an else statement. So if we haven't hit the bomb, we can say, print, winner. And just to make it neat, I'll do this here as well. This just means we're going to print this on another line. So in this if statement here, we're checking if the number pick is equal to the randomly generated number being bomb. We're ending it with a semicolon. If this is true, we'll run everything that is inside of it being signified by indentation. So this print statement here is indented once using a tab. So it is inside this if statement. So if this if statement is true, this print statement will be printed. Else, this will be printed. And as you can see, this else statement has no evaluations to check because this is simply run if this if statement is not evaluated to true. You can tell that this if and else statement is a part of the same control flow because they are both indented the same themselves. So now we continue, let's print a nice debugging statement such that we can print your pick equals pick random number equals it's the bomb, it's the random number is the bomb. And now let's push F5 to save and run this. And let's push 2 to see what happens. You see we're 1 because we've avoided the bomb. The number I've entered is 2 and the random number generated is 1. Let's run this again, push F5 to save and run. Put 2 in again. Ah, oh, see I've got the same number this time, it says we've exploded. But let's run this again, let's try something else. Now let's see if I enter 4. As you can see it says we've won. So as you can see in this case I've cheated. So this statement might need a bit more control. So what we can do here, we can change this else statement to an elif statement. So this is else if. This is just short because programmers are lazy, you don't want to write else if. So this elif will be run if what's inside of here is evaluated to true and the if statement is not. So we run the if statement, if this is not true, we'll try evaluate the else if. So this is run else if this is not true. So now inside of here we'll check if pick is not equal to bomb and so if both of these evaluations have to be true we can make pick less than 4. So you now see if anyone enters a number greater than 3 this will no longer evaluate to true. So now let's run this and enter 4. So now you can see this winner statement is no longer printing off. If I'd like I could print off a neat little else statement so if there is an input greater than 3 it will print off. Cheater detected. So now let's run this. Let's enter 6 for example. So now it says cheater detected because I've obviously entered a number too high and tried to cheat. In this case this still won't work if I enter 0 I can still cheat because we're not checking for this number inside this evaluation. So now we have to check for another evaluation inside this elif statement and check for another and and make sure that the pick is above 0. So we want and pick greater than 0. F5 to save and run. So now let's see what happens if we put 0 in. You can see there's another cheater detected. In this case you can add as many elif statements as you want. So we can make elif pick is equal to 4. We can print we detect a number 
of 4. Just because we can. And there you go. So we can have an if else statement, which is most common, or if we need sometimes just an if and elif statement. Normally, an if and elif statement without an else statement is only done inside another nested loop. Though, if you can get away with it, use an if and else statement because we are checking less evaluations. Though, when we want, we can check as many elif statements as we want. So, to start the control flow, we start with an if statement and we check whether it's true. If it's true, we evaluate what's inside of that using indentation. And if it's true, we don't evaluate anything else. If it is not true, we'll go to the next elif statement, evaluate what's inside of that. And if this is true, we'll evaluate what's inside of this. If it is not true, we'll go to the next elif statement. And if this is true, we'll evaluate what is inside of this. If it is not true, we'll go to the else statement. And this else statement is always run.